Kerala Mohsen Jamal and you watch Afghan News. Afghan President Hamid Karzai on Wednesday questioned whether the insurgent group was able to seek a political settlement and blamed Pakistan for fomenting instability. The president had met with the country's political and religious elite to discuss the future of peace negotiations after the assassination last week of the government's top peace envoy, former President Burhan Abbani. Karzai took a, sw a swipe at neighboring Pakistan, saying it was clear the Taliban leadership was not independent enough to make its own decisions about how it conducted the war and suggesting talks with Islamabad and the state. A statement issued by Karzai's office said that the meeting included tribal elders, legislative chairmen, cabinet ministers, former Mujahideen commanders, and his two vice presidents. The monthly average of armed clashes, roadside bombings and other violence in Afghanistan is running 39% ahead of last year's figure. The UN reported Wednesday with more complex suicide operations involving multiple bombers and gunmen. The statistics show that the intensity of the nearby decade-old war is growing not a bearing as the United States and other nations start to withdraw some forces with an eye toward pulling all combat troops out by the end of 2014. It is quarterly report in its quarterly report on Afghanistan, the United Nations said that as of the end of August, the average monthly number of incidents stood at 2,108, up 39% over the same period a year earlier. The figures include insurgent attacks as well as assaults by NATO and Afghan forces on the Taliban positions. The U.S.-led coalition said it disputes the U.N. figures and plan to hold a news conference to release its own statistics. A police officer says a bomb set up on a motorbike exploded near an airport in West Afghanistan, killing one female policewoman and two civilians. Sayyid Sharif Mohammadi, the police commander for the airport in Herat city, says the attack on Thursday morning targeted five policewomen riding in a police vehicle on their way to their jobs at the airport. Mohammadi says the bomb, which was detonated by remote control, also warned 10 people, including the other four female police officers riding in the police vehicle its driver and five civilians who are near the blast. Taliban militants have not commented on the issue yet. Pakistani authorities have closed one of the two border crossings used by trucks carrying NATO war supplies into Afghanistan after a bomb hit an oil tanker. Police officer Mohammad Tayyab says the Chaman border crossing was closed for security reasons after an explosion on Thursday killed a bomb disposal expert who was trying to defuse the device. Tayyab didn't elaborate on the bombing attack. Pakistan sometimes closes the border temporarily after attacks, though earlier this year, the other Bezier route in Turkham was closed for 10 days in protests against the killing of two Pakistani troops by NATO helicopter nearby. Relations be between U.S. and Pakistan are currently strained because of U.S. allegations. Islamabad supports Afghan insurgents. The United States is close to de deciding on whether to label the Pakistan-based Haqqani network as a foreign terrorist group, the U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said on Wednesday, amid calls for a tougher stance on militants accused of series of high-profile attacks, noting that the United States had already placed a number of individual leaders of the Haqqani network on its terrorism blacklist. Clinton told reporters in an appearance with Egypt's visiting foreign minister that the United States would work with Pakistan to put pressure on such groups, a move to name the Haqqani, Haqqanis as a terrorist group would bar U.S. citizens from providing support to the group and freeze any assets it might have in the United States. The Haqqani network has been in the spotlight after U.S. officials accused it of mounting this month's attack on the U.S. embassy in Kabul with the support of Pakistan's powerful military spy agency. Clinton noted she raised the issue in a three-and-a-half-hour meeting last week with Pakistan's foreign minister and scoring that the Haqqanis represented a threat not only to the United States interests but also to Pakistan and Afghanistan. Former Pakistan President Parvaz Musharraf has suggested that his country allows the Haqqani network to operate on its soil to stop India from creating an anti-Pakistan Afghanistan. Musharraf told the Daily Telegraph if he were in government, he would certainly be thinking how best to defend Pakistan's interests and that if Afghanistan is being used by India to create an anti-Pakistan Afghanistan, Pakistan would like to prevent that. He further said that the United States must understand Pakistan has its 
own national interests. The former president also asserted Pakistan must talk straight about why are they not acting against the Haqqani network in North Waziristan. A small plane carrying 18 people has crashed in a mountainous area of Indonesia. Officials said as search and rescue teams rushed to the scene. The crash happened on Thursday while the plane, which was carrying 40 adults and four children, was on a local flight in the west of the country. The Spanish designed Casa CT-212 was about halfway through its 30-minute flight between North Sumatra and Aze provinces when it lost contact with the air traffic control. Bambang Irvan, a transportation ministry spokesman, said minutes later the turboprop-powered plane sent out a distress signal and then dropped off the Air Force radar. Bonner Hotagol and Air Force Marshal told the local stations this prowling Indonesian archipelago of 240 million people relies heavily on air transport and has poor aviation record. Libya's new rulers have said they believe fugitive former leader Muammar Gaddafi is being shelled by Normandic tribesmen in the desert near the Algerian border while his followers faint off assaults on his hometown. Intense sniper and artillery fire from pro gaddafi fighters has so far prevented National Transitional Council forces from taking Syria despite more than two weeks of fighting. The United Nations and international aid agencies are worried about conditions for civilians trapped inside. More than a month since NTC fighters captured the capital Tripoli, Gaddafi remains defiantly on the run, pledging to lead a campaign of armed resistance against the new leaders. Meanwhile, fighting continued on separate eastern and western fronts and Syria on Wednesday, and commanders said they would try to join the two fronts together and take the city's airport. Heavy clashes rocked northern neighborhoods of Yemen's capital Sana'a at dawn on Thursday, breaking a truce aimed at ending the war's violence since a popular revolt against President Ali Abdullah Saleh began eight months ago. Reports say three areas in North Sana'a had been hit by heavy shelling and gunfire between government troops and armed followers of a powerful tribal leader, Sadiq al Ahmar, who supports the opposition. Many residents fled their homes on Thursday morning as the fighting intensified, shattering three days of calm in the capital after Saleh ordered a ceasefire upon his surprise return to Yemen on Friday. The truce had followed more than a week of fighting when over 100 people died, raising worries that the country could be dragged closer to civil war. The president has faced the biggest challenge to his 33-year rule in mass protests across the country, demanding his overthrow. And that a man has been arrested and charged by authorities with plotting to damage or destroy the Pentagon and United States Capitol buildings by using remote control aircraft filled with plastic ex explosives. Rizwan Ferdows, a 26-year-old U.S. Citizen, citizen, was also charged with attempting to provide support and resources to Al-Qaeda in order to carry out attacks on U.S. soldiers stationed abroad. The United States Attorney's Office in Boston said on Wednesday, authorities launched an undercover operation to capture Ferdows involving FBI employees posing as a member of Al-Qaeda. Authorities allege that Ferdows, a physics graduate from Boston's Northeastern University, began planning to commit, commit a violent jihad against the U.S. in early 2010. He allegedly modified mobile phones to act as remote electrical switches for improvised explosive devices. And that's all for now. Thanks for staying with us.